second game from the set. And this one is a little bit harder than the first one. Uh, I used about five minutes for this game. It's got uh, grouping elements, it's got sequencing elements. All the rules are sequencing rules, uh, but we're going to use a double layered sequencing game board. And uh, let's see how we get there. So uh, let's read. We have four art historians, F, G. I'm just jotting down randomly like these elements. And uh, once we get a sense of them, we'll see how we piece them together. Uh, these are historians. They're what are they doing? They're giving a series for public lectures. Uh, lectures can be on topics of L, O, S, and W. So already I'm I'm thinking, oh well, there you go. There's the grouping elements, right? Like uh, you're a professor or a lecturer, right? What are you going to lecture on? This thing or this thing, right? So there's our grouping element. But you keep reading as as lectures begin one at a time, right? One at a time. So we have four total one at a time. So there's our sequencing element: one, two, three, four, right? And each art historian, that's this, that's this thing over here, will be giving a lecture on a different one of the topics, right? So that's that's why I'm like, oh well, then I'm just sequencing, right? See, I'm just double layer sequencing, right? Art historian on top, uh, a lecture on bottom. So if I put an F over here with an S over here, that means F is going first, lecturing on S. Right, so um, it's also a one-to-one. -one, it's also a one-to-one -one mapping. Right, we have exactly eight slots for our eight items. All right, so let me clean this up a bit, and we'll take a look at the rules. Rule number one. Uh, it's a very wordy rule, but I'm actually only reading the key elements. I'm reading O. I'm reading and W. O and W. What about them? Well, both of them are earlier, earlier L. So like this is a very basic sequencing rule. Now, uh, typically this doesn't mean much, but look, it's a four. It's a four slot. Right, four space long sequencing game board and this implicates three of our items this is very restrictive right specifically l l is now look l is a huge follower right got two things in front of it can't go here can't go here which really look it just means three or four are the only two possibilities for l and if you put l into three o w are now fixed right o w do a little dance over here on one two and who's the last guy s right so this is actually incredibly restrictive now the of course l is three is not the only option for l the other option for l is four if i put l into four then what then this rule just disappears, right? Because it's rule, I mean, basic sequencing lessons, right? If you don't understand this, you have to drill uh, your uh, review your core lessons and drills, right? Because if L is in four, it drops away. You're not going to contradict this rule. Of course, O and W are going to be before L. L is in the last possible spot. So that's why this rule goes away. It just doesn't exist anymore. So how awesome is that, right? Already, rule number one makes me want to split this game board up into two game boards because in one game board, right, O, W does a dance over here. L is in three. S is in four. In the other game board, L is in four, and this rule doesn't even exist, right? So, okay, let's keep them keep that in mind for later. Uh, let's keep going uh, on to our next rule. Rule number two, uh, F has to be before O, F before O. So there are they're on different levels. So I'm just going to write an F over here like this and then sort of like a, a downward leading, right? Downward leading O like this. So F is a leader, O is a follower, right? Of course, you could link this up if you want, but I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to split it up later anyway. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, but F is a leader. Just think about how this rule operates visually on this game board. You know, leaders have to go into leader spots, right? Can't go into follower spots. F can't go here. Okay, and O, O is a follower, so it can't go into the leader spot, right? So that's that's just kind of thinking about how this rule operates onto our game board. And finally, last rule, rule number three, also very wordy, but I'm just reading the key elements here. H, earlier than uh, two items, G item and the J item. H must be before G and the J, H must be before the uh, G and the J. So again, you know, because it's only four uh, slots long for our sequencing game board, this is incredibly restrictive. If I put H over here, then GJ is doing a little dance, right? With F being the only, whoops, that's not F. F is the last item occupying one, right? That's one option for H or alternatively, right? You see, I mean, H got two things after it, right? So that's why I can't go into three, four. So one, two are the only two options, which means alternatively, if H is in one, once again, look, H is in one. H is already a leader. It's a supreme leader. You don't have to worry about this part of the rule anymore. You're not going to contradict it. G and J, no matter where they go, they're going to be after H. So once again, the rule just disappears. So how awesome is that, right? Like you can split this game board with rule number one or rule number three. So I'm definitely, definitely splitting this game board. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use rule number one. So the first thing we do is we take our master game board and we copy it over exactly as it is right, in order to prepare for the split, which we're splitting on L. Uh, rule one restricts L to uh, three or four. So now for this game board, right, see the OW has to be before L. So it does a little does a little dance over here on one, two. But actually, it doesn't. It doesn't because I kind of uh, it does not great form. You're supposed to sort of do this methodically, but I can't help it. I already see the F has to be before O, right? S F has to be before O. O can't take up a leader position because then you're forcing F off the board. So right, so F 
right? F has to be this way before O, O has to be in two, right? W has to be in one. And already I can represent my rule number two. This is the only spot for F to lead, lead O, right? So it just very quickly, I already got, got rid of uh, this rule and this rule for the sub game board. But anyway, let's go back to this one over here. See, remember this one over here, this rule just disappears, right? It simply disappears. It disappears because you've already taken care of it. O and W are going to be before L, no matter where you put it. L is in the last possible po position. So um, it's taken care of for this one, right? You see, it's taken care of for this upgame board. It's taken care of for this upgame board. It's redundant. You can get rid of it. Now, remember, your remaining rules apply to this game board and to this game board. Okay, so let's take care of uh, this one first. But look, we already took care of it, right? That's what I mean when I say I jumped the gun a little bit. Uh, so now, how about let's take care of this rule for this game board, right? H must be before G and uh, G and J. So that's great. I mean, you really have to put H over here, and then G and J. They do they do a little dance like this, and the last spot goes to the only remaining item S. That's it, right? So now, now let's take a look at uh, these two rules for this game board. And you know, with the F O rule, I can I see sort of a lot of F could be here, right? In which case, right, O gets to be here or here. Okay, alternatively, F could be here, O has to be here. And that's it, actually, right? So that's it. F can't be here, because then the force is O here. So you can split this game board up uh, along where F goes, right, either here, or here. Or you know, like I said, this one also forces a two way split on this game board, right? Because H H is a leader can't go here or here must it's relegated to one or two, right? So why don't we do that? Same deal. You start by copying this one over, right? And let's put uh, H and one and H and two. So how about H and one over here, H and uh, two over here. The H and two is way more restrictive because see G J now have uh, only these two places to go, doing a little trade. F now has to go here, right? F has to go here. Now what's on the bottom? Well, O S and W, right? So if you don't just take stock, what's left? It's only three items. O S W. Uh, O's got to go here or here, which means who's going to go here? S or W, right? S or W. And then you just have a O. Uh, w S is your other item, right? You can think of this as one item. Think of this as the other item, whichever one you choose to take the other one. So uh, they're actually both floaters, quote unquote floaters, because we sort of took care of all the rules, right? O could go here, in which case the other one goes here, or O goes here, the other one goes here. Uh, either situation is fine. Okay, now back to this. See, back to this one. This rule becomes restrictive now, right? Where are you going to put F? You're not going to put it here for forcing O here, right? You're also not going to put it here, forcing O here, right? So you have to put F over here, forcing the O over here, in which case, again, you're done. You have no more rules. H is definitely before G and J, right? H is supreme leader. So GJ, they get to do a little dance. And then you have no rules regulating SW. So they get to do a little dance like this. So that's it. Everything reduces down to one, two, three sub game boards. I mean, I say three, right? Technically, you could reduce this further. This one, you could just sort of fully determine it out. It's like four more. This one is two more. This one is uh, a lot more. But really, it's it's quite arbitrary when you decide to call it, when you decide to stop. You stop when, I mean, I stop when visually it becomes um, representative enough. All right, so let's take a look at the questions. Question six, our standard acceptable situation question, um, the formatting, you know, I cleaned this up, of course, so it's easier to see, and they they don't. Right. What can I say? They always do this. So just be very careful when you're reading. Um, so I, I'm going to refer back to our original list of rules. L after O W. Look for L after O W here. L precedes O, so no good. A is gone. L is uh, after both. L is uh, after both O W. Uh, next up, F has to be before O. Right. Look for F before O. So F O F O is fine. O F no good. And F O is fine. And lastly, H has to be before both G and J. So here J is out of place. Here G is out of place, leaving us with answer choice E. Question seven is a must be true question. Um, no additional premises. Now, I know they don't give you the answers like this, but this is what you should do. You should, uh, on my paper, what I do is I, I read A and I read F. I read earlier. I read S. I don't read anything else. And uh, I write it out like this next answer choice A so that I don't have to look at the English and that way my error rate is reduced. See, uh, logic games all about translating, right? Translating a visual language. So why arbitrarily stop at the answer choices? You shouldn't, right? You should translate just like this. Okay, all right, what must be true? F before S, well, it's true here. It doesn't have to be true here or here. Right? They could be together or S could precede F, so no good. H before, yep, uh, L is pretty, yeah, L is a follower. So definitely true, definitely true. Choose it, you move on. Question eight is a could be true question with an additional premise that our W items now in three. So you look at your sub game boards. This one's not W3, so we're not looking at this one. This one's not W3, so we're not looking at this one. This one W is in three, forcing S to be in one and O to be in two. So 
uh, at this point, you know, what could be true, I don't know. I, again, I don't do this. I just sort of brute force my way down the answers. But I've seen some students uh, do this, like, feel the force kind of thing where they're like, well, could be trues can move, right? They, they can move. So G, J can move. So that means, right, these things can move and they'll just sort of pick up on answer choice E. It'll just speak to them, right? They'll feel the force. So, I mean, that's fine if you can do it. I, I, I can't do it. Right, so I, I have to just kind of brute force my way. Uh, F, W, no, G, O, no, G, S, no, H, S, no, and then finally it gets to answer choice E. Yeah, that's fine. Question line is a cannot be true question. In other words, must be, must be false. So uh, there are four could be true answer choices. Right, so let's just take a look. Uh, F, L, and F, L, not together here, not together here, and not together here. So there you go. That's a not could be true. In other words, cannot be true, must be false. Choose it, move on. Last question, 10 is a could be true question with an additional premise that our G item is getting paired up with the S. Our G is getting paired up with the S and then what could be true. So uh, in this sub game board, uh, they do have to trade up now. J is over here, G is over here, paired up with the S. And if you just happen, to, this is a could be true, right? So anything that's true over here potentially answers this question. So that's a quick way to do it, right? And as it turns out, L3, is the correct answer choice, right? So you could, you know, you could look down here. Uh, of course, this one's never gonna happen. G and S are never gonna get paired up. Uh, over here, you could have the G over here, J over here, S over here, W over here, O over here, but it just so happens that none of these options answer any of these. Hi there, JY from 7Sage. If you found this lesson helpful, then you should sign up for a free account on 7sage.com. You'll be able to access our LR and RC lessons as well.